What's going on, everybody? I'm Jordan Edwards. Welcome to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. Uh, Demi, where are you at? Let's see, Demi. Demi, what's going on? Guys. <laughs> and of course, uh, we have a very special guest today. Um, one, a repeat guest. I'm adjusting here. A repeat guest we had on the show when it was just me over a year ago. She's a multi hyphenate actress, singer. I'm probably missing other things. I'm sure she's a really nice person, really generous, and I'm sure she's kind to animals as well. Here she is, Caitlin Tarver. <laughs> Hello, how's it going? It's going good. It's going good. Um, good. Yeah. Did you? Uh, do you like my? Uh, are you? I'm sure you're kind to animals. What? A I don't know where stunning, that came from, but uh, uh, what a stunning. I mean, you did not miss a thing. I am. I am all of those things and more. Mm. I mean, <laughs> Caitlin Thank holds. You. <laughs> Caitlin holds a special place on this show because just quick history history tour here. Yep, uh, yep. I started the show during quarantine. I did six episodes. And for the first six episodes, I just contacted people I knew personally. I just DM'd people, say, hey, do you want yep. to be on this podcast I'm doing? Caitlin was the seventh show. And she was the first person that I interviewed that I had to book like a professional show host person, producer person. Wow. Okay. Um, I did not know that. That's yes, amazing. Yes. That's so you really hold, special. You're, you're very special. Very special. I feel very honored and I and, feel very honored to be back. And not only that, but you also were the first person that I interviewed that had a really nice Zoom slash live stream set up. You had this great lighting and everything. <laughs> and I was like, this girl is on it. She knows this what she's doing. This girl is pro. She's a multi-hyphenate. She's kind to animals. She's got great lighting. She knows how to work Zoom. I mean, what can't she do? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, wow. Thank you. That's That's awesome. I'm glad to be back. You are here because you are. You have new music coming out. You have new music out and a new album yes. coming out. Uh, you have, yes, uh, very busy. <laughs> uh, you, uh, let's look at. Um, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, you have the new. Uh, it's uh, shit happens is the new single. Yes, and I'm curious. It's it sounds like a like a joke song, but it's really not a joke song. It's kind Correct. of like that existential <laughs> contemplation on life. Yes. Uh, th there's, there's one line that sticks out to me is like, you can't say that your dad died just for a reason that it just, you know, people die and it sucks. Uh, right. So where did this song come from? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. it's a, it, it is a bit of a heavy song. And it's funny that you say that it sounds like a joke because I actually was just listening back to the like uh, the, my producer and co-writer when we wrote it, recorded it all in a voice memo because, you know, when you're writing, it's like, oh, let's just start recording in case someone says something great and we don't remember it, um, which happens a lot. Um, so he has this long voice memo um, that is like, uh, sorry, you guys just disappeared. Are you still there? We are here, and just like on cable news, we can go do a one shot. <laughs> I was like, "Am I alone?" Or a one shot. Um, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. So we're still okay, here. Okay, okay, we're still yeah. here. Great. I'm gonna yeah, keep yeah. going. Yeah. Um, so you know, when we were writing it, it was almost like the mood was light. It was like, how do we kind of write a song called "Shit Happens"? And and we were kind of in more of a jokey mood with it. It was like, you know, we were the lyrics were flowing, and it was like, oh, you know. Sometimes your boyfriend dumps. It, it was almost like Alanis Morissette ironic vibes. Like it was like, how, what are all these scenarios where like things just don't go your way? And then kind of the more we kept writing it and the more we were like changing the instrumentation, like it started on guitar and it was kind of like, ding, 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 you know, like a little more like, ha, 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 isn't this funny? And then we put it on piano and then we kind of started, you know, we, we wrote that second verse, which has that line in it that you're referring to which is like, um, uh, make good out of the bad, but don't tell me there's a reason that somebody lost their dad. So that obviously felt heavier and it came from this place of like, I don't know, a frustration with like, I've just seen a lot of pain caused by people trying to put a bandaid on really, really hard situations. Like, I know we all do it because we're human and we don't know how to handle things that don't make sense. I mean, me included, it's like, 
yeah, what are you supposed to say when someone experiences tragedy? It's, it's overwhelming. It's like, uh, they can't, you know, I just, I have this feeling of like, the, the feeling behind that line was, if someone loses a parent or loses someone close to them in a tragic way, saying like, oh, everything happens for a reason or, or you're gonna grow from this, doesn't really bring any comfort. It's just sort of like, yeah, but I kind of wish I still had my dad. <laughs> like, and I don't know, that was kind of the feeling behind the song um, of just, I guess wanting to have, uh, maybe create some space for people to feel sad if they need to. I, I was walking um, to work this morning and I'm not gonna lie, this song came on Shuffle because it was like one of the most recent songs I had uh, parted from Spotify. Uh -huh. and it couldn't have been a more perfect moment for that song to come on. Like Aww. something happened last night, we're not even gonna go into that, but I was walking <laughs> in a movie the song makes you feel like i'm like you're in a movie you know and yeah like, like yeah shit happens and and it's okay to just sit with that right it's you, you know there doesn't have to always right. be an that's exactly what i think you were saying in there right yeah exactly and i know that's like a heavy thing and i'm not you know i, I don't know there's obviously a broad spectrum of like obviously things good things can happen from bad things at, all the time like but yeah, I guess just glossing over it was what I was trying to um, kind of express a uh, frustration with through this song. And that's so cool that you felt like you were in a movie listening to it. That's awesome. <laughs> Caitlin, you mentioned you're a, obviously multi-hyphenate. You've been on TV shows and movies and and you've done the music. But I feel like in the last couple of years, you've really leaned toward the music side of things. What's mm -hmm. behind doing that? Um, I mean, it's funny. I started out, I feel like we may have covered this in our first interview. I don't know. It was 100 years ago at this point, it feels like. Um, but you had I, just done, like when we did it, you, you were still kind of coming off ballers a little bit, you know? Yes. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously the acting world sort of really came to a halt with the pandemic. I mean, I think it got hit a lot harder as far as like me in music, like I'm independent i can put a song out when i want um so that was sort of a you know i was like well i can't you know auditions are gone like shows are not shooting um i'm just gonna keep making music and i don't know i think for me it's always been like what i am really passionate about and i think i've only kind of fallen more in love with it as the years go by and um it just gives me such an outlet to express things that I want to say. Um, I don't know. I just seem to be able to do that better through song. Uh, and it's really creatively fulfilling. And I think just, yeah, having the, um, the chance to like make a song, I can put it out. I can share it with people pretty immediately. Uh, I mean, obviously it takes time, but uh, I don't know. It's just been kind of empowering and a, a really fulfilling thing to to do. So I just keep doing it. <laughs> Dimmy is uh, also in the multi-hyphenate world. She just released a single and she's hosting oh. this podcast. So, uh, yes. I hope doing it all. Speaking of being independent, that's something that people do emphasize. Like when you search your music, you try to find information about like how you've been doing it. Um, they do emphasize that you've been independent and how have you been able to do that? And, you know, we have other artists that have come on the show that say, I've gone with labels, it's been great, but I prefer being independent for so many reasons. What are your reasons for staying independent? Um, I mean, I think just the control you get to have. <laughs> um, you get to do things your way, you get to, I don't know, it just feels a lot more like I really have a relationship with my fans and like people who respond to my music you know, we just have created this back and forth and I love being able to put new stuff out for them and, and have them be like, oh, this is great. I don't know, just that relationship is really empowering. And I think going off of, I mean, I really listen to what my fans say. Like I really listen to when they respond to certain songs or certain ideas. And um, I try to, you know, lean more into that to maybe give them more of what they want. Like, it's just all very like, I don't know, it feels organic that way. And to get to have that control um, over like what you're putting out, when, how you're putting it out, 
you just get to have control in so many areas. Um, and which is really nice. I think as an artist and a creator to get to have that is, uh, I don't know, it, it feels empowering. And, uh, but at the same time, it can feel like you're wearing every hat and it can be overwhelming <laughs> at the same time too. So I don't know, I think it's always like there's pros and cons to, to everything in life. And I think, um, yeah, I think everyone, every artist has like a label horror story. Uh, and it's just kind of a rite of passage at this point. Um, so I don't know, I think like there's so many different ways to do it and you just kind of have to keep going with what feels right to you. And so far staying independent has felt, felt good. Caitlin, uh, this new album, you have a new album coming out on October 15th and shit happens is, is kind of a, um, you know, uh, an appetizer for the album. Cause it's, you, you mentioned that you know, in, in press materials and interviews you've done that this is a very, going to be a very serious album, a very, um, <laughs> introspective album. Um, yeah. And there was like a, a podcast episode, like a Dax Shepard <laughs> podcast that inspired it. So tell us why you're going down this dark Elliot Smith path that you're going down. <laughs> I'm dark. Can't you tell? I'm just, I'm drawn to the darkness. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm joking, but I kind of am. Um, I don't know. I think, you know, we all went through a dark year. Uh, there's stuff, I, I feel like everyone kind of had to face a lot of demons in a lot of way and me included. And I think I just, I don't know. I just put, put it into the songs. Um, and I feel like I wanted to really keep pushing myself to like go deeper, like go more existential, see what's underneath that, like what, and just say these things that are hard to say um, in hopes that, I mean, it was, it was cathartic for me to get to do that and healing for me to get to do that. And then, you know, the hope is that it can be cathartic and healing for people to listen to. Um, I don't know, for me, the best part about finding a book or a song or a piece that something that someone has created, uh, the best feeling is when it has something in it that you're like, whoa, like they said that, or they feel that too, or oh my God, like I've been trying to find the words to express this feeling and this does it perfectly. I mean, that's what I appreciate so much about art and and what people put into it and so it just inspired me to try to do the same and um put put stuff in there that felt kind of dark and heavy and uh i don't know i mean it's it's i'm not trying to scare people it's not like <laughs> there are some light moments but um i think yeah i think it's just going digging a little deeper than i ever have before so i think i just wanted to make that clear and that's kind of why i put shit, shit happens out as the first single it's kind of like all right, guys, this is kind of the, the road we're all going down. Um, here's a little taste. So if you want in, uh, come along for the ride. But this is kind of what what to expect. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> we, last time we talked about how you're, you know, it's different writing songs when you're in your late 20s versus your early 20s. At this point, do you feel like you're kind of jaded when it comes to life? <laughs> Gosh, you know, it makes me sad to even hear you say that, but uh, I, I don't know. Like, mm. yes and no. Like, I think it's just life. Like, yeah, I did talk about when you get into your later 20s, when you're like not 18. You know, I've been in this industry for a long time. I've been in it in these different phases of my life. And it's just, it affects me differently. Like, it can't help but sort of take a toll um, it's a lot, it's dealing with a lot of rejection. It's dealing with a lot of, you know, vulnerability of like putting yourself out there constantly and, and not getting, not hitting these markers by the time that you thought you would. And that makes you sort of like rethink everything and, um, compare yourself to other people. And then it just kind of keeps going. And, you know, you see other people that aren't in the industry, like they're having kids. You're like, should I be having kids? Like, should I even keep doing this? I don't know. It's just, it's just a lot to think about. And I think, 
I don't know. Like, I think that's just what people my age are thinking about and, and dealing with. And I don't know, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, I kind of am like your jaded, um, cynical aunt who's like down the road. It's like, just wait. Okay. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. You're 21 now. Like just wait till you hit 28. Like, and, and I'm not trying to be scary. I, but I don't know. Maybe I am trying to be scary. It, Maybe it's working. Mid, Demi is in her mid twenties now. So, um, <laughs> It's, I'm so sorry, Jenny. She's looking. I'm, so sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like wearing all these different hats and like starting so young, you started at age 13 into mm-hmm. the industry. Um, and I mean, here we are now. You have worn so many hats. How did you kind of keep it together as time went on and going, having the whole world see every kind of stage you went through? How did you survive mentally? Um, I mean... I think I have a good support system. My a lot of my family's out here. I've had a lot of the same friends since I was, you know, first moved to town and um, you know, a lot of them aren't in entertainment, so they are not dealing with as much of the um anxiety spiral that it can bring, so that kind of helps balance it out and and remind me that this isn't like the end all be all of my life. Um, but I think I've done a lot of work on my mental health. Um, You know, uh, you mentioned Dax Shepard podcast. You mentioned, you know, Brene Brown. Like I've I've looked. Are you are you a self help person? Do you do a lot of? I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm not. um, I don't like devour them and like. uh, I I try to take everything with a grain of salt. in that sense, because I don't know, there's like parts of self-help that can be a little annoying. Um, But (laughs) I think there's a lot to what I like about Dax, what I like about Brene, what I like about self-help is this um, emphasis on uh, putting yourself out there, expressing, kind of voicing these fears and these um, anxieties that we all have in an effort to try and make us not feel alone and feel a little more connected to each other. And like, Oh, like, you know, it's just become important to me. Like if anyone could look at my life from a, from a distance and be like, Oh, wow, look at Caitlin. She's done this. She's like very successful. She's been on TV. She's been on, uh, you know, she puts music out. She's had else. She has EPs. Like if, if there's an opportunity to be like, Hey, like just because that has happened, doesn't mean I am happy all the time or I have it all together or that I'm just like skating through life with no worries. Like, I don't know. I just, I like that there are um, people doing that now because I think it can be such a uh, thing that you think while you're going through life. It's like, Oh, if I could just make it to here, like then all my problems will go away. And then, you know, you have all these people who have made it to that point and they're like, Hey, like, yeah, your problems aren't going away. Like it honestly maybe is worse. Like <laughs> exactly. And you're like, wait, what? Like, what am I doing? Sorry. I can't hear you. I think I'm like canceling you out. <laughs> did you mention Brene? As in Brene? Yeah. yeah. Did you, I actually found her on the Oprah Winfrey uh, Super Soul Sunday. Did you also? Cool. Yeah. I honestly can't remember where I found her, but I think the first thing I saw her uh, saw from her was her TED talk on, uh, I think it's like titled the power of vulnerability. And she's talking about a lot of this. She's like, you know, we're all here on this planet, like for connection, we all want to belong. We all want to like, uh, that's what motivates everything. That's why, you know, we're here. That just made a lot of sense to me of like, oh yeah, we're all like wanting to connect with each other and not feel alone. And, I don't know. I think that was just like kind of sweet to me, like um, to be reminded of that. And then she goes on to say, like, the way we get there is vulnerability and like opening yourself up to, uh, you know, kind of being like, oh, am I weird? Am I enough? Like, am I this? And like, it's not easy. and It's uncomfortable. Like even doing this interview and like even thinking about putting some of these songs out, I'm like, no, I don't want to actually, I want to like stay in a hole and never talk to anyone and never have anyone know anything about me. (laughs) It's like this like push and pull, but I think, um, I don't know. Uh, 
I think I just, I find that it just makes sense to me. Um, and so I, I'm just really drawn to it. You have a tour schedule with Johnny Swim. I'm transitioning out of the dark, deep, deep. Uh, <laughs> Are you um, getting Oprah. uncomfortable? Are it's you like, maybe oh, some I'm, thoughts I'm coming totally up? I'm comfortable. I'm good. I'm good. I'm I can totally talk good. I'm good, man. I'm I, I actually want to talk, you know, you're talking about Dak <laughs> Shepard. I feel like him and Kristen Bell are kind of like the, the self-help mental health couple of America, you know? Totally, so, totally. So I'm totally yeah. good with you. Totally. But I do want to talk about, you do have a tour scheduled with Johnny Swim for the fall. What's the status yeah. of that tour? Are you still going hardcore on it? or Don't eat breathe a word of is it gonna happen or not no i don't know I, right now it is still scheduled to go i'm very excited uh you know i don't know details of like how uh, what's gonna happen as far as like mm -hmm. uh covid and spikes and masks and vaccines and not i don't know i don't know but um well, i'm just work, totally Caitlin, is, is vax card day because today is the first day that you have to have your vax card to get into venues restaurants indoor restaurants that's okay week. so um, well there you go i've seen on instagram a couple of my music band friends here in new york are talking about that new york is coming going to become like a live music capital because you have this vaccine um mandate thing right so beyond that um let's talk about the actual performance and the music itself yes. you have uh you know upbeat music you have the the newer some music that's not quite as upbeat uh yeah. so when you put together a live show pacing is really important so right. are you since you have this tour coming up have you been working on the live show the sequence all that kind of stuff uh well now you've got me I stressed just, like, out something up and you're like oh oh shit i need to i'm like that. oh yeah right i gotta figure out my set list oh. um yeah no i i i i haven't like figured out exactly what my set's gonna be because yeah i think it's interesting i this feels like a new sort of chapter for me as an artist and i want to reflect that in the show and so you know it might be a little more uh stripped down uh singer songwriter um which I'm not really that mad at, uh, kind of sounds exciting to me. And especially with a tour in a band like Johnny Swim, like, I don't know, they're so like welcoming and great. And I feel like their audience uh, will be too, hopefully. <laughs> um, so I think they'll like it, I hope they do. Um, but yeah, I think I'll be doing a lot of the newer material because the album will come out mid tour. So it'll come out October 15th. That'll be so, wild because you'll slowly get people singing the songs. Like gradually they'll start singing the songs more as you tour because I know I can't out. even imagine it. It's going to be so, so great. I feel like that'll be, I don't know. I've just, I've wanted to, obviously all musicians are like, please let me play on stage. But even before the pandemic, like I hadn't done a lot of touring and I hadn't gotten to have that, you know, connection with an audience with people i think it's just so i need it for my soul as an artist and as a performer because you know i'm also an actress i have that side of me that loves the to perform and like sure. loves to be sure, sure. on stage and um get that feedback and i've been missing that and you know i i think even talking about my mental health again uh i, I think it's like um you know, not getting, you know, putting songs out there and having to just sort of like hold your phone and, and scroll and be like, do people like it? What are they saying? It can be so uh, awful because you just, you can't find enough comments. People aren't listening. You, you're like looking at Spotify. It's such a bad like thing. So I'm really looking forward to like having the album come out, getting to go play a show for real people, have them either sing it or at least like take it in and not have to have that like doom scroll moment of like, what are people saying about me? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Absolutely. And you'll get to like <laughs> post some epic concert photos of you. Exactly. You know? I'm yeah. sick of taking pictures in my backyard. You know, mm -hmm. everyone's sick of that. Everyone's like, can we see you in a different setting? I'm like, <laughs> yes, please. I'm ready. <laughs> Boring. There was a little tour uh, with the Jonas Brothers. Oh, back in the day. Going back, yeah. Just because I grew up loving oh, yeah. 
which one it was, Nick Jonas, I think. Who was the one with the with the curly hair? You gotta know your Jonas Brothers apart. Dude. You're a are you call yourself a fan and you don't even know? Be like, wow. And man, it was like when the, the when there was magazines and people, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think that I think you're talking about Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any, like leftover tea from that tour? I know it's been a minute, but just for like the fans of that era. Oh man, tea. I mean, I I don't know if this is out there, but I played like one of my first shows as a solo artist as Caitlin Tarver was at Tom's River Fest in New Jersey where the Jonas Brothers was also playing their first show, I think. So we met when I was 15. So Joe and I are the same age. So Joe was 15. Nick was probably 12. Mm. Uh, you know, Kevin was what, like 17, 18, like so young. And they were they weren't... already super nice? They're always, they're very, very nice. They were very nice, but it was before they were famous at all. Like it was like both of us just kind of being like, here we are, like our first show. In Tom's um, River, New Jersey. In Tom's River, New Jersey. Like I probably have a picture of that somewhere on some computer at my parents' house. But um, yeah, so weird. So like I've known them since then. And so, yeah, like we, we met and then they, you know, they would tour and they'd come down to like Georgia and Florida and I'd be like, Hey, like, can I, you know, they'd put me on their shows, um, at like small clubs in Orlando or Atlanta or Tampa. And I would open for them. And then, you know, obviously they exploded and I was like, uh wow <laughs> like this is crazy uh and i would go you know see them at the arena and i wouldn't get to open but you know we we get to say hey at least <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah it's pretty pretty wild pretty wild brother what your favorite jonah's brother um oh god don't do this to me <laughs> yeah. love them just, all equally what what Demi likes to do more than anything is create Twitter beef. That's what. <laughs> that's, 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 I know what you're trying to do. Okay. Yeah. I told you. No, I'm kidding. She, I told you mine. She did. I had to throw you under the bus. Demi did ask. We interviewed Richard Marks, and Demi asked, "Who was the worst person you worked with and the best person?" But you know that you were really fishing for the worst person. You just put that oh, best yeah. person thing on. Yeah. I mean, I would do the same thing if I were in your position. I'm trying <laughs> to get the real tea, you know? Yeah, totally, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin, you're 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 from Georgia. Yes, and you. Th- you hear the accent come out now and then on certain words. <laughs> and I'm curious, I'm from Missouri, so I, I understand. But what brings out your Georgia accent more, drinking or exhaustion? Oh, that's a good question. I feel like they're one and the same. <laughs> uh, probably, probably drinking. When you start yeah. to slow down, when the words start slowing down, yeah. It starts to slow down. I just really start to channel like this kind of like, I don't know, Southern, Southern lady. I don't know. My mom, I really just started to handle my mom. My mom doesn't really drink, but (laughs) Um, yeah, that's when my accent will come out. I mean, or if my parents are like visiting or if we've had like a long, a long phone conversation, I'll all of a sudden be like, all right, what y'all want for dinner? And I'm like, whoa, where where did that come from? (laughs) Uh, Do you you say supper? Do you say dinner or supper? Right, exactly. Good catch. What do y'all want? What y'all want for supper? Mm. All right, y'all hungry? Yeah, y'all hungry. Yeah, yeah, it comes my, my out dad, pretty my, easily. My dad says, My dad's from the Boot Hill of Missouri, which is southeast Missouri by the Kentucky border. And he okay. says, Warsh instead of wash. Warsh. Warsh. Wow, that and is he has no accent other than that. Dimmy, oh. Dimmy is, is good. Dimmy's from the Bronx, and you would never know it except when she gets, she gets a little like. Demi from the block uh, sometimes, and it comes. God, out. that's cool. Oh. That's cool. I'm jealous of that. Hmm. I won't even attempt. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even attempt. I Go mean, ahead, Demi. What What are you speaking of? Like, um, what come out when you drink? What's What is your What is Caitlin's drink? You go to a restaurant or 
girls. What are you ordering? Are you the wine type or the margarita? Are you the whiskey girl? What's going on? Oh, 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 oh. Depends on what kind of night I'm trying to have. Uh, -oh. uh I don't know. I like I like a margarita. Lately I've been doing a spicy margarita. Pretty good. Uh wine. Wine, if I'm kind of like, oh, it's like I'm trying to keep it chill, I'll just have like a glass of wine. Although wine can be sneaky. Wine is sneaky. <laughs> wine oh, can be gone. sneaky. That glass turns into a bottle real quick. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, instead of another, and all of a sudden I'm talking like my mom again. And then you all, know of what I mean? all of a sudden it's Cancun 2011 all over again. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, I'll usually do like a margarita, spicy marg. Uh, that type of thing Can't if i'm really know. trying to get get crazy yeah well I, I, it seems like you're a person who kind of keeps keeps it in control you seem like a, a oh i'm glad you think that <laughs> i'm glad that's the image i present yeah, 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 yeah. you don't see some of the videos on my phone i'm gonna keep it that way no 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 this is this is not the day these are not the days where people uploaded stuff to the internet not thinking about the consequences right yeah that that, that never happens i'm sure i've never done that <laughs> we uh, can't. We, we got to let you go pretty quickly. But before we go, we play this rapid fire question game that everyone loves. Well, oh, God, people God. Love, one or two people have loved. Uh, oh, so that quick. And because you're a multi hyphenate, the theme of this will be multi hyphenates. So oh, let's see how that goes. God, I... All right, Caitlin Tarver, your edition of What's Your Deal is on multi hyphenates. So did you so like our little scared. intro? We have like a little bumper and stuff, a little animation. That okay. was this, this is this is high quality. Production sophisticated. Value. Even though our sound is terrible, our graphics are <laughs> you guys, yeah. the graphics spot on. Um, okay, so here we go. Oh my god. If you were casting a rom com, who would be your ideal leading man? Brad Pitt. Brad, still, still, you would do like, you'd do like a May December. Do you like here? Let me ask you a question. Do you, do you enjoy salt and pepper hunks? Are you like in the salt and pepper hunks kind of thing? Sure, but I don't even feel like Brad Pitt is salt and pepper. No, he's not. He's that's not. more of like a George Clooney. I mean, which I mean, I'm I'm into, but Brad is still so hot. Universal. Yeah, Indeed. I mean, or like a Harry Styles uh, for like you know. But he's, well, he is dating an older woman, so yeah, <laughs> maybe I have a chance. <laughs> maybe. I'm kidding. Maybe. I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. Uh, what's your favorite musical? Ooh. Shoot. Shoot. Mm. What is my favorite musical? Do you like newer musicals, like uh, like more on the Hamilton side, or the old like Roger and Hammerstein kind of stuff? I mean, I I I, I do like Hamilton. I haven't seen it live yet, but I am going to go see it in LA in September. I but like I watched VIP it. That you would have been able to see it live at this point. You're VIP think, enough that I know, right? Like, yeah, what's happening? But I did see um, Waitress, the Sarah Bareilles one. Sure. Who did you? Which who, I who, love. Who was, do, who was playing the lead when you saw it? Do you remember? What was her name? The girl. Because didn't Carrie, Carrie Russell was doing it for a while, wasn't she? Or she was in the movie. Somebody was oh. doing it. Uh, Sarah Bareilles did it herself for a while. I know Right. That. I didn't see Sarah, but I think it was like, uh, she's, uh, I can't, her name is escaping me, but she was like one of the more famous ones. Not famous. She's famous on Broadway. Okay. <laughs> move on, please. All right, move on. We're, we're, we're losing it. We're losing them. Waitress. Though, love it. Wait, what's harder, acting in a scene or lip syncing for a music video? <gasps> oh, acting in a scene, hundred percent. Lip syncing, I, I whatever. That, realizing after after I wrote that, I realized that you know the, the scene. There's different scenes are harder than other scenes. You know, it's not really right. So like, like, it, like having to lip sync like underwater or. Right, upside down. I don't know if you've I mean, done. I guess, like in water. <laughs> saying that, like there are sometimes when, if you have to do like um, you know, like when you see people, lip syncing in slow motion, but they're yes, still so matching. You have to. The way that works for those of you not in the production world is Let you them speed know. up the playback, <laughs> so you're basically lip syncing like a chipmunk, 
And yes. then, so when they play it back for the real thing, it's slow-mo, but it looks like you're moving in real time. And there's really nothing more humiliating than that because you're lip syncing to like, it sped up so much, but you're still having to get the emotion. And usually if you're doing that, it's because the song is emotional and you want this effect of like, oh my God, it's so emotional. It's in slow-mo. Like I'm really feeling the feelings, but you're having to sing it double the speed. And it is so embarrassing. Timmy, have you made a music video yet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's for a different song. Yeah, later on. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that that could come close to having to do like a difficult emotional scene. It's all purely just because of the humiliation element and the weirdness of it. You know, it, it's, yes. like, it's like. Um, I always imagine. Have you ever been in a movie or TV show where you had to react to a CGI thing that wasn't there? Um, yes. I mean, I That's can't. That's kind of weird. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but that has. But it is, yeah, it's so weird. I can't imagine people, like I see the like Game of Thrones, you know, like where they're like writing, a, it's all CGI and they're having to like sob. And I'm like, that is, that's truly a good actor. <laughs> they're actors. They're actors. They're actors, yeah. if you actors, will. Actors, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Multi-hyphenate preference, J-Lo or Gaga? Ooh. So, geez. I won't be offended. Another Twitter beef question. And I know. actually not really. I think you can say both because both are, they're apples and oranges. I think, I mean, they are apples and oranges, but I think Gaga. Okay. I feel like- Gaga, I love j -Lo. The one thing about Gaga is she's definitely taken risks with her acting roles. Yeah. I mean, obviously J-Lo is amazing, but- I, I guess I say Gaga because I'm like, I don't know. She's just so out there and wacky and everything she does, which I'm just always like fascinated by. I'm like, it's how do you have the confidence? How to evolve your career as you get older and things change, you know? She's, do what? She's also a good model on how to um, morph as you get older, as things change, you know, gracefully. Right. Yeah. I mean, she, and, and yeah, she's just so, I don't know. She's so bold. I guess yeah. is what I admire. Well, don't don't underestimate your boldness. You've got some boldness. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Absolutely. That's what I was fishing for. <laughs> and I'm glad I got it. <laughs> what musical genre would you like to explore more? Just in general. <laughs> besides poker, uh, obviously. Besides poker, the obvious mm -hmm. answer. Um Hmm. I don't know. I feel like maybe um or style. Maybe genre isn't the right word. Maybe style. No, no, no. No, you're right. Uh I guess I'm re I've been really in the mode of like singer songwriter, very organic, very simple, um, minimal production. That's what this album is a lot of, uh, which I've been really into, but I think it would be cool to sort of push the envelope on production, like maybe more synths, more electronic, more, I don't know if I ever will do that, but, um, I should try it. I should try it. You know, absolutely. You should just explore, just explore, just everything. explore, just see what happens. I need to get to work on the album too. Honestly, it's already, yeah. it's already behind schedule. <laughs> uh, it's already induced this, uh, anxiety. Yeah, I know. I'm coming yeah, away that. here like, oh my god, I don't have a set list. I don't know what other genres I want to try. What's your set list? What's your what's your genre? What what are you doing with your life? What are you doing? Why are you so dark? I'm just kidding. And the last one, we kind of win uh, win this territory with the Jonas Brothers, but doesn't it feel like Justin Bieber should have gone into acting by now? Whoa, Gosh, it does. Has he not? No. I think he's done a little bit of like stuff here and there, but I mean. Right, but not like a, a real role. I think there was a missed opportunity where him and Selena Gomez could have done some stuff together, some like, you know. Right. What are you going to do? They could have been Meg what Ryan are you do? 2.0 or, you know. I know. They really could have. I do think he should have gone into acting. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to just like any day now drop the announcement like I'm um, in a film. Yeah. Well, I, I like his, his current combination of I love Jesus and weed at the same time, which, you know, I, don't, I think those things don't have to be mutually exclusive, you know. 
<laughs> I do. I am loving it too. That's me. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, I guess I doesn't feel like Justin Bieber should have gone into acting right now. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess it does. You say yes. The answer to that is the yes. answer to that is yes. All right, Caitlin, we have to let you go. <laughs> thank you so much for jacking around with us. And, oh, thank uh, you. For, Thanks for, for having, having me. As a repeat guest. I know. I like to, you know, I really would like the credit for launching your show. I don't think that's too much to I mean, Well, here's, here's the deal is I did you, um, you and Shamir back to back. Okay. And those two okay. shows were like, I'm a real show now. So Right. It yeah, really catapulted yeah, yeah. you. So- you know, it's it's so nice to see your success since I helped really launch you into the world. And it's fine. Like, you don't have to owe me your life. Like, it's fine. I pre I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I guess new album is out October 15th, correct? Yes, October 15th. single is out now. Any other thing you want to plug while you have the, the stage? I mean, you know, I'll be putting out uh, a couple singles until the album launch. So just uh, follow me on all the things so you can keep up and hear some of the m new music. And um, yeah, I mean, there's an album pre-order, there's vinyl, there's t-shirts, I don't know, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I appreciate everyone who's streamed one of my songs or bought anything from me. It really, uh, really helps and it means a lot. So. Thank you. You're welcome. I I, uh, <laughs> I speak for all of us. <laughs> all, right. all right, Caitlin. Thank, thank you, you so guys. much for joining us, and good luck on the tour and with the new music. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right. That was Caitlin Tarver. New single is out now. New album is out in the fall. And uh, I guess that will do us. Well, that will do it for uh, it's real with Jordan and Demi. We will be back tomorrow, and until then, have a good week, everybody.